الله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف خلق الله محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين. We've spoken about marriage a few times before, and here when we're talking about relationships with your kin, with your family members, obviously you are going to have to deal with the topic of your spouse. Uh, the first part of this discussion is on uh, how you are able to deal with your wife and the second part in the next episode is how to deal with your husband. And we can see something that is uh, frequently imprinted within the teachings of our religion Islam and that is the value of having a wife. You know when we talk about that level of interest that Islam shows in marriage and why uh, a single person you know um, should always try as much as he or she can to you know uh, get married that level of sakina that level of tranquility that level of harmony that a, a person has when they do get married we did mention if you remember when we were talking about your house the home, the maskan, and maskan comes from the word sakina as well. How many times has this very word been used, liyaskunu ilayha, um, in the Holy Quran, that level of sakina? And remembering that when it does come to a married person, the reward, other than him fulfilling half of his religion, Raka'atun yusalliha, as the Prophet says, Raka'atun yusalliha mutazawwij. One, one raka'ah that a married person prays, afdalu min sab'ina raka'ah, it is better than 70 raka'ahs that a single person prays. Uh, when we see that whole equation of how we understand things, and unfortunately because of the modern society, because of you know, distancing ourselves away from that which is sacred, that which is holy, our tradition, our custom. Uh, the uh, instructions given to us, not only by our religion, but also by our forefathers, the positive things, of course, the good culture, the positive culture. You know, someone says, uh, you know, I'm not into culture or I don't believe in culture. That's a very, very wrong attitude because there's positive culture, there's negative culture. But the whole outlook that Islam has on something as important as marriage really invites us to change our perspective, to change our attitude. Islam says, uh, get married and marriage will lead you to sustenance and income and wealth and rizq. In yakunu fuqara, as the verse in the Holy Quran says, in yakunu fuqara, يُغْنِهِمْ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهُ وَاللَّهُ وَاسِعٌ عَلِيمٌ If you are poor, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enrich in you, will give you the wealth that you need in order for you to be able to get married. Here the Holy Prophet says, اتَّخِذُوا الْأَهْلِ Get married. فَإِنَّهُ أَرْزَقُ لَكُمْ Because it will bring about rizq for you. It's the best form of you being able to get rizq. Where does rizq come from? It comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It doesn't come from your employer. It doesn't come from getting a job. It doesn't come from uh, having a degree. It comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are all means. You could have the best job, but then all of a sudden you have back pains and you're not allowed to, uh, able to work anymore. You could have no job at all, but be very serious and genuine and uh, vigilant and aware of your responsibilities, your social res responsibilities, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open up all the avenues for you. Important thing is we need to do what it is that, it, that, that is um, demanded from us, religiously, spiritually, morally, socially, economically, and then we leave the rest for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So no, you can't go with empty pockets, obviously. There needs to be something, but at the same time, let's lower our demands. Let's try to focus more on the sanctity of marriage and not on the ceremonies surrounding uh, a wedding and a marriage. And if we were to do that, we will be more successful. There will be more harmony. There will be more love and 
clearly there are going to be more people that are going to get married and at a, at a young age as well. That's why when it comes to that understanding that Islam has in the Quran, it says, Hunna libasun lakum. Your wife is a form of clothing for you, a dress for you. Wa antum libasun lahun. Why is the word libas here used? Libas in the metaphor, in the sense of protection, in the sense of sheltering, in the sense of covering, in the sense of concealing, in the sense of perfecting one another and making sure that I am uh, removing any kind of uh, issues that will affect that harmony that I have because that's the zina. she is your zina. he is your zina, and that's why it is referred to in this metaphor as libas. The hadith from the Holy Prophet says, فَدَارِهَا عَلَى كُلِّ حَالٍ You need to tolerate mudarat. you need to tolerate and bear with her in any situation, whether it's good, whether it's bad. فَدَارِهَا عَلَى كُلِّ حَالٍ وَأَحْسِنُ الصُّحْبَةِ and, and be the best company to um, your wife. This is the haqq that a husband has, uh, uh, that a wife has from her husband. And this is what the husband needs to accommodate for, her, for his wife. Bil the ma'roof. The verses in the Holy Quran that repeatedly mention the word al ma'roof. Wa'ashiruhunna bil ma'roof. Wa'atuhunna ujurahunna bil ma'roof. الذي عليهن بالمعروف وكسوتهن بالمعروف أو سرحوهن بالمعروف متاعا بالمعروف All of these verses and many many more that talk about how a husband needs to remember with benevolence, with grace. He lives with her, he's married to her, he treats, with, he treats her in the best way possible. بالمعروف whether you are with her, you treat her good. Whether something bad happens and it falls apart, la samahallah, you're also going to treat her in the best way possible. Whether you are with her or whether you are not with her, you are never going to wrong her. And that's the best way of how we are able to choose someone to get married to. Let's look at the criteria that Islam says, not what I think is best for me, but what my religion introduces for me. Let's not be that much influenced with this kind of environment that we have, unfortunately, in today's society. Let's be more focused on seeing the sacredness of marriage. What the Quran says, what Ahlul Bayt have said to us, you know, Marriage itself is a talent, it's a skill. We need to preserve it in the best way possible. Two things that create that best form of choosing and the process of selection for a spouse. Number one, how religious are they? And number two, the level of akhlaq that they have. When they are religious, when they have high standards in akhlaq, you're never going to go wrong. Because if it does work out, then you're going to be happy. If it doesn't work out, you're not going to be wronged. And that's exactly what someone uh, had asked the Imam. Who do I marry my daughter off to? He said, you'd marry your daughter to a righteous person. Because if he was to stay with her, he will, re he will treat her right. If he was to leave her, he will also treat her right. Unfortunately, when marriages do fall apart nowadays, we can see how bitter things get. It becomes an all-out war between two families. And unfortunately, in many cases, someone is being wronged by keeping her in limbo, by doing this, by doing that, etc. And etc. This is why um, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, he says, لا غنى بالزوج عن ثلاثة أشياء فيما بينه وبين زوجته. There are three things that a husband should never do without. وهي الموافقة. And that is 
to be in solidarity, to conform with your wife. الموافقة ليجتلب بها موافقتها ومحبتها وهواها وحسن خلقه معها for you to treat her in the best أخلاق حسن الخلق to treat her in the best way possible واستعمالها استمالة قلبها بالتهيئة الحسنة for you to be prepared for her for you to prepare yourself for her take care of yourself be clean, be tidy, do what it is needed for her to also be attracted to you. Ultimately, she is a, a woman, she's a human being, she has those needs as well. She likes to feel attracted to her husband. Imam Al-Kazim, salamullahi alayhi, he says, Tahyi'atul rajuli lil mar'ati Mimma yaztazidu fi iffatiha A husband being ready and preparing himself and having a good appearance and being tidy and neat and everything else that would have that level of attraction from a wife's side is something that would increase also in her chastity and in her modesty. Seeing that we need to adjust our equations and, and, and revisit the foundations of what it is that our religion require from us as far as how we deal with our wives. We understand that previously I had mentioned, you know, that uh, Imam Ali alayhi salam used to sweep and, and use the um, uh, rooms and clean the garden and clean the place inside the house and outside of the house. This is something that Imam Ali alayhi salam used, used to do. Unfortunately, nowadays a man thinks, well, my work is outside because that's the hard work. And you, your, the wife, your work is inside because that's the easy work. No, parenting isn't easy. Cleaning is not easy. Cooking is not easy. Taking care of managing uh, issues and affairs of the house is certainly not easy. And that's why Imam Ali salam mentions this hadith, دَخَلَ عَلَيْنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَآلِهِ Rasulullah came and visited us one day wa Fatima jalisatun عند القدر and Fatima was sitting down next to a pot wa ana unaqqil adas and I was cleaning through the lentils then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi said to me ya Abul Hasan if and I said labbayk ya Rasulullah then he said isma' minni wa ma aqul illa Min amri rabbi. Listen to what it is that I say, and anything that I do say is from the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ma min rajulin yu'inu imra'atuhu. Any man who helps, who assists his wife, fi baytiha, and listen to the wording here, fi in her house, yu'inu imra'atuhu fi baytiha, in her house. إلا كان له بكل شعرة على بدنه عبادة سنة with every hair that he has on his body there will be the rewards of the worshipping of one year صيام نهارها where he is fasting during the day وقيام ليلها so you helping your wife you are going to be be receiving an abundant reward of ibadah of one year where during the day you're fasting and during the night you are doing your ibadah. Ya Ali, another hadith. Ya Ali, la yakhdimu al The only person who serves his family. A husband needs to serve his wife, serve his children, serve members of the family. That khidma that we're talking about. You want to say that, oh well, you know, why should we be servants to our wives? Why should we serve our husbands? Why should we obey our husband? Why should we obey our wife? You know, what this is slavery. Unfortunately, that's that kind of negative influence that we can see in today's modern society that is really, really taking us away from the sanctity of marriage. And that's why I'm saying you know, let's go back and visit what Islam says and rely on these traditions that have been mentioned from Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam لا يخدم العيال إلا صديق Only a Siddiq, only a saint 
is someone who will serve his family, his wife. O oh, shaheed or a mata, O oh, rajulun, yuridu Allah bihi khayra dunya wal akhirah, or a man where th in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to want for him khayra dunya wal akhirah, being kind to our wives, even though she might be rude, even though she might be angry, even though she might um, do something for one day or at one instance, having that sabr, having that tolerance, and remembering that she is going to uh, be a part of me. I am a part of her. You know, min khalaqa lakum min anfusikum. From within yourselves, you have that partner which is always going to uh, be someone who perfects you, which is always why that level of emphasis is repeating that we need to always make sure that we have that level of harmony in the household, that we remove any kind of toxicity that is going to be there in the household. I did mention this hadith before and I'll mention it again here, obeying your wife, in things that are haram are of course going to lead to your own self-destruction and her self-destruction. And here the, the meaning of obedience, Imam Ali salam, asked Rasulullah, what do you mean by obeying your wife which is going to lead you to hellfire? And he says, allowing her to go wherever she wants to in the negative way. You know, there might be places where she shouldn't be going to. Of course, he needs to, the, fa the husband, who is managing the affairs, the general affairs of the household, needs to have some kind of guidelines, not only for himself, but also his, for his wife, also for his children. And most importantly, remembering that he should never allow her to do things that are, is, is in disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, leaving the house with zina, leaving the house and going to somewhere where there will be sin, leaving the house with inappropriate hijab here. وَلَبْسُ الثِّيَابُ الرِّقَاقِ We've mentioned this hadith before, mentioning it again here. And for her to... وَالْعُرُسَاتِ وَالْنَائِحَاتِ وَلَبْسُ الثِّيَابُ الرِّقَاقِ Going to wedding ceremonies that are, that, where there will be, for example, free mixing and haram and things like that. Or for her to leave the house wearing tight clothing. And this is another reminder for us from Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam that uh, we need to always remember لا طاعة لمخلوقين في معصية الخالق You should never obey a makhluk at the cost of disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who always comes first? Always comes first. You always remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes first. Your mother comes first. Your mother-in-law comes first and then your spouse. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi, he says, إِذَا عَمِلَتْ أُمَّتِي خَمْسَ عَشْرَ خِصَالْ حَلَّ بِهِمِ الْبَلَاءِ If there are, these, there are 15 things that if my ummah were to do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send down misfortunes upon them. One of them is, أَطَاعَ الْرَجُلُ إِمْرَأَتُهُ وَعَصَى أُمُّهُ Where a husband obeys his wife and disobeys his mother. This is one of the, of course, the negative things that we can see again in our society. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafi khalqillahi Muhammad wa alihi tahirin.